in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of the Top Ten Show. I am John Roca. I am Matt Nost. Um, <laughs> you know, you, guys? going to start that way? All yeah, right. I'm going to start Go that ahead, way. Why please. not? Why not? We had a, 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 a pre-show show. And, oh, uh, we did, yeah. We had a nice little talk out. So yeah. we're here for you guys now. And we lost to the annals of history. <laughs> yeah, you honest. guys would have loved it. Unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, we would have been fired. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fired by who? Fired by our fans, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Some of them. <laughs> some of them, some yes. Of them. Some of them, yes. Uh, not everyone. It's nothing, it's nothing against you as fans. It's just no. the, uh, the jokes between us. You'd be like, I, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> that's a, well, that's uh, a bit too blue. Anyway, so yeah. uh, how are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm you know co- going along as much as I can uh, post-Collider. Uh, really happy about how many people have come aboard uh, my YouTube channel, you know, it's over 11,000 subscribers, which is pretty insane. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah, it's already monetized, which I was blown away by. And the yeah. pa- the Patreon I started for just for what I'm trying to do there has kind of gone. It's just above 500, which is nice. I wanted to get it to 2,000 if I can, so I can really start paying people to come on the shows and be guests with me on shows and, and build it up from there. Sure. Um, I had deals. I was uh, negotiating with somebody for a studio, but that fell through today, which really sucked and sent me back down the whole for a couple of hours, but I'm climbing back out. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. There's other studios. Yeah, there is, but this one was free. I know. You showed me the pictures. You asked me, hey, you want to do a walkthrough? Yeah. It's like, let's talk next week. Yeah, well, Uh, don't need to talk anymore. Well, you know, c'est la vie. It's not as though you have to walk through and then really start to visualize and taste it even more. Yeah. And then for the rug to be yanked out. That's what Roxy said. Roxy said, you got to look at it this way. At least now you know, and you don't spend another minute Depending wasted. on it. Yeah. Or we are wasted thinking about it. You can just move on it to sucks, the next thing. But that's life. Yeah. You got to move on because otherwise it's what? Woe is me every time something bad yeah. happens? Can't keep doing that. You can't. Right, right. The life is too short. No shit. And, and you're going to take all the hits anyway. So you so, got to be able to deal with them as they come along. Yeah. Life, yeah. life is not out to get you. Life just doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> it's, that's the ugly truth. It is. Yeah. You have to, and unfortunately, it's nothing like the average stranger does not dislike you. They right. don't think about you at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, – honestly, you don't register on some level as a person. You're just an obstacle yeah. like me getting down the aisle, me doing this, yeah. going – driving through traffic, which we both had to deal with yeah, today. to get here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it just happens sometimes. It's, it's other human beings like, I don't like. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's basically it. Yeah. I got to get to where I'm going. Uh-huh. You're in the way or you're around the way. I don't have time to have a Christmas moment with you. I got to get to where I'm going. And that's the kind of usually how it is. You're right. You're right. And that's what um, Roxy said. She taught me something uh, today. We were talking as the three P's that she learned growing up. It's sure. Personal perseverance and persistence, something like that. And so uh, she was just saying it's not. It's never personal. You have to persevere and it's persist about- to get where you want to get to. So something like that. I'm probably misquoting her, but that's what she said. But anyway, it was a good conversation to kind of pick me back up again. But I was like, you I know, because think- I got big dreams, Matt. I got big dreams now. I'm trying uh, to make things happen. Well, it sounds like you found a yogi. So <laughs> hold on to that little Delphic oracle and the, let her guide you down the path of life. Right. Don't let her go. <laughs> if you open up that payroll and outlaw, you might want to throw her a few shekels. I mean, please. Uh yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, that's what's going on. What's going on with you? Well, um, the Houston people. Oh, so yeah. we have official where we put it on our Facebook uh, groups, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show, all yes. spelled out. But this is what we got back. Um, and hopefully by now you've gotten this. But purchasers will get an email with instructions as soon as the show is taken down. Yeah. So um, we asked them to take it down uh, last week. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not sure when it will go off. But as soon as it does, you guys will get an email and then follow that along. And if you have any trouble, you can email us. Uh, uh, top 10 uh, show at Gmail, all spelled out. And hit, l- let us know, or at Facebook, or at Twitter, at mm-hmm. Matt Nost, at The Roca Says, or at Top 10 Show. Yeah. And uh, we'll help you navigate that stuff. But uh, so you should be getting an email. We are working on another venue. We are coming. London, boom. Yeah, London's happening. London's happening. May 2nd. 
There better be, y'all better be running to sell this place out. 400 seats. Be part of the accomplishment of selling out this place with the top 10. Yes. Going global yet again, going international. Come join us. Have a blast. Talk to people who went the first time. I saw some people tweet or uh, post about it on Facebook. Can I go by myself? Hell yes, go by yourself. Yeah. There's going to be a shit ton of fans who will absolutely take you to their bosom and take care of you and have a good time during the show. And if you <laughs> shout out that you're by yourself. Mother Russia <laughs> pulls you in. Suckle at my teeth. <laughs> and if you shout out that you're by yourself, I will come and nestle you to my bosom at some point in the show. Uh, that's beautiful. It's a cornucopia of love from London. <laughs> Just saying. We're going to bring it all. Yeah, please. Yeah. And uh, other people. Uh, Pele and uh, Liam, um, yeah. who tried to help us out last year. Uh, yeah, um, they're going to bring like friends, family, other people have reached out. Like yep. uh, We're already getting texts and whatnot, or not texts, but tweets, yep. saying, can't wait to see you guys, blah, blah, blah. You're, not, you're wrong. Here was my number one. And you're like, all right, <laughs> fair enough. I'm, you're entitled to your opinion. Of course. Uh, yeah, but it should be a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah, Working yeah. something extra. Maybe we do that uh, group picture like we did in L.A. Oh, that'd be fun. Since we Holy got the extra time. Crap, all 400 people? Figure out a way to do it. Before. Hell yes. Well, we got like four months to, yeah, to figure, figure out the out. logistics. I think we get, have to get like Spanish fly, Spanish web, whatever that is. Uh, you want to get everybody, you know, Spanish fly? <laughs> you want to get them aroused for this picture? Anybody, everybody. Take your knockoff Viagra. Walk on up. We use that Matt Damon shit from fucking Ocean's 13 and put a little waft in everybody's. No, but I mean, like, what's that? Stuff, what's that stuff that hangs down that women like fly or like swim around, spin around, and oh, I know what I'm about. Yeah, 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 yeah. the sole style. Yeah, right. So we'd have to climb up on two of those so that we can take a picture of all 400 people behind us. That would be brilliant. Let's just get sex wings. <laughs> Easy peasy. Then we just wrench it up. Where are we going to go? We're fully secure. <laughs> If we could add an element to being able to go through the crowd or being right well, now we're kiss. Yeah. Yeah. We're just flying. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. I, uh, Gene, my Gene Simmons to your Paul Stanley <laughs> or vice versa, whatever the case is. <coughs> I just don't want to be Catman. That's, uh, Which one's the Ace, Ace Freely? Is he the guitarist? Yes. I like Ace. I'm a cool with Ace. I okay. dig Ace. Yeah. I'm all I, I got Ace. nothing against that. I don't need Gene. Gene's a little too much for me. I mean, even the theatrics never spoke to me. Yeah. But I get it. It's of a time. I mean, look at Alice Cooper. He was doing the same type of thing. Fair just point. not to the straight choreography that they were doing, the repetition. Right. You know, that is very much a business these days. It's not like they didn't have bad music. Like, Kiss had great music. Hey, it's meat and potatoes to me, but I understand oh, okay. why people love it. Like, Gore. Gore has great theatrics, but I don't like any of their songs. Uh, Kiss, I like their songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, Gore is a, appealing to a very niche. <laughs> it's it really is. It's not saying we're for the masses. Right, right. Gore. So, that's what you got to appreciate them. I, I mean, I kind of like a couple you do? of things here and there. Okay. I've listened to a lot of Gore. Fair enough. I had a heavy metal phase. I listened wow. to a lot of a lot of them. Wow. Yeah, I agree. I grew up with a guy who was massive into heavy metal. A friend of mine is a Richard. He was such a massive fan of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. He turned me. He turned me on. I, told, I think I've told him, he turned me into Iron Maiden. Turned me on to Judas Priest. Sure. Turned me on to Metal Church. Um, but I didn't like any of it. Like I could never get into. I could never get into it the way he did. But I, like I was like I didn't have a lot of friends. So he was one of the few friends I had growing up at that time. So you tried to get into right. I would go yeah. to his house and listen to him, and we'd sit. Uh, we'd sit in his bedroom and just he'd play the records, mm -hmm. and I would just listen. But like I would could never get into it. Um, I see. I think as an adult, you yeah. might dig Maiden because it's more Iron Maiden with yeah. Eddie. Okay. Eh, you know, it's it's more trying to tell kind of various stories, so to speak. Right. Right. Uh, and the songs are very well crafted. I mean, some of that, you know, is Judas Priest. So that's also meat and potatoes to me. Well, the f it, how does Judas Priest end up in a State Farm commercial? And that's how old we well, got. Well, because everybody's breaking the law. Uh, breaking yeah, the, it doesn't, it's meaningless now. Yeah, I guess so. It, back in the day being in It was a fucking, big deal back then. Yeah, all that yeah. leather. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's right, right. And now it's just like, well, okay. Yeah. I'm used to it. What else you got? <laughs> a lot of anger going on the uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or they didn't induct... Judas Priest or Soundgarden. Um, this is interesting to me. I know. And then they put in Whitney, Notorious B.I.G. Mm. and Nine Inch Nails. Someone got really mad that like B.I.G. was a rapper for like five years. Priest has been doing music for – I was like, come on, dude. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, I mean for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they're not wrong. Well, it's B.I.G., man. That's lasting impact. That's Hall of Fame. True, but what is this Hall of Fame then? I'm not against him I think it's about it. lasting impact. But I'm saying the, the – okay. 
Yeah. But it's called the rock and roll. So some people take it on its face. That's fair. Totally and saying, fair. Well, what the f- Judas Priest has been rock and roll <laughs> I since agree. the 70s. I think Judas Priest should have gotten in as so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, and my, Soundgarden. My bigger one is Whitney. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, in the rock and roll it, hall. At least thing. Biggie still brings the same type of bravado and machismo right. that you're accustomed to from guys of that age making music. Right. And if you talk which about is rock and roll. Right. And if you talk about the foundation of rock and roll, exactly. which is rebellious and sex and things of that nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggie was all about cross pollination. Right. In the early eighties with DMC and Aerosmith. Right, right, right. And there's this mid marriage of like we're both doing the same things. Rock and roll in a different genre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's your generation's you know, when yeah. you make music, but we're all living rock stars were living like you know pop stars rap stars whatever you want to call right. it uh, Whitney was not rock I mean she did a lot of drugs oh yikes well the, for that aspect Aye. of rock and roll well yeah true. Oh, I'm sorry why why are you doing weird vaudevillian takes he uh, Tex Avery here <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh, and the eyes just come flying out Oh, dude, we got to get that on that live stream. Oh, my God. Those would be great. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I will show up to the Tex Avery. It's not a problem. If you need somebody, yeah, it's the big heart, all that stuff. I, I blow my stack. <laughs> my face turns into one of those steam whistles. <laughs> Hell yes. I'm in for all of it. I like heel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sucker. I like sucker. We turn into a lollipop. That was my favorite. <laughs> Sucker. It's always that music you do. Yeah, Whitney, it's just like uh, – yeah. Nine Inch Nails, I, I understand they're more electronica, but they, it's it's still yeah, rock edge. Yeah. Like, uh, that's closer to the mark to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, I'm fine with all of and them. And Reznor is still going. Reznor is still working, so kind of – Well, he's moved into like composing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but he's still working. He's still working. I mean that Watchmen score was incredible for the TV show. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just – what. What's the definition by which we let people in? Because that's what individuals are getting confused about. That's a fair point, actually. And I don't know how you define that. Right. It's like an esoteric, it's these things. Yeah, how is Whitney in rock and roll? Like, that's I don't know. Thing. All right. Like all-time legendary pop star? 100%. Right. 100%. Pop Hall of Fame? Totally. Music Hall of Fame? Music Hall of Fame, even. Yeah, fair point. Even yeah. more general, uh, gen- generalized. How bloated would those shows be? <clears throat> Do we just open up to all music? I mean, because I've watched, I've fast forwarded through some of, you know, rock and roll to watch and to like see certain speeches and see, oh, they're not, you know, like Beastie Boys. Yeah. I watched that one because they're not going to perform anymore. Right. uh, As a group because the group isn't complete. Yeah. Like, what are you guys going to do in place of? This is interesting. I like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, But music, like, they already do what, four or five bands. They all get their Mm -hmm. speeches plus. You're right. Performance. Performance. It's like three hours for the Rock and Roll Hall. Yeah. So music, what is this, a two-day event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's six hours? Yeah. Every year? Yeah. Or we do it every, like twice a year? There's a winter and a summer? Yeah. Like Olympic style? <laughs> <laughs> we got to catch up. There's been a lot of music. There's a lot of people. Because otherwise, it's going to be like Tex Williamson for, yeah. you know, for the country category and be like, I don't know. That is. I don't know. I have no idea who that is. Yeah. He wrote how many songs? He, okay. Unless you go like you, you had to, you know, stop making music 50 years and then, then you can make it in. That's fair. But I don't know how that appeals to modern generations. Yeah. None of their music is going to be on this award show. <laughs> so, They'd be very mad. It's doomed to fail they're no already, matter what. <laughs> they're already mad about the Oscars. You can't put this thing. Yeah, they, <clears throat> people what, are so mad. What are you going to do? Of course they're mad. People are so mad. Of course they're mad. That's insane. How I, I saw are. someone attack someone we know. <clears throat> And I was laughing, <coughs> laughing in this. Well, Attacking? You mean online? Yeah, I won't say who it was, but one individual expressed a completely rational, well thought out, like, you know, this, this didn't happen, but I would really have liked to seen this individual get nominated. Right. That's it. Right. And someone responded, what, what would you take out? And he was like, X. And well, I just said he, but he was like, X. And then the other individual was like, well, that. What the fuck? Like <laughs> this other dude came in out of nowhere and was just blew it up. And and the individual we know is trying to be rational every time. Right. Was calm and measured and just like, this is this. I, I never said that. This yeah. was this. And then this is this. And then eventually it's like, all right, man. Yeah. You're what? just looking to fight. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm having a conversation. Was it two people we know just going at each other? No. It was oh, one it was we know. some random dude. And some random dude. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you open yourself as soon as someone comes hard at you on Twitter, you're opening yourself up for yeah. a twenty tweet thread. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. I've certainly made my 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 share of mistakes on that end. So 
Yeah, it's a mistake. You're never going to win him back. <clears throat> no, just I, let it go. You're fighting ghosts. Exactly. What I try to do now is like look at how many followers they have and then I decide if I want to interact in a debate about something. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes kind of how I look at it because it's like, well, it looks – Petty to be fighting with someone with ten followers or nice seven followers. Spin. Nice That's what I feel spin. like. I saw like I saw somebody with like I don't know four hundred thousand followers going at someone with ten and using them as some example. And I was like, this guy's ten followers. Yeah, they're not an example of anything other than maybe their immediate family who's following them or your if need that... to squash. Yes, an ant in essence. If you have right. four hundred thousand, how dare you right. step to my throne? Ah, oh. <laughs> you find. <clears throat> you find the one with the most followers that has the same uh, point of view as the person with 10 followers. That way it has more resonance if you're going toe-to-toe with someone like that. So that's what I'm slowly learning on Twitter. But I try not to have any battles on Twitter. I think, didn't you pick that up at the Stephen A. Smith learning annex class that he taught? <laughs> She's like, this is what you got to do. All right, Steve. I'm disappointed. <laughs> this. It's the point. It's the it's so ridiculous He's and yet insane. Uh, How does it work? He is infinitely better than me than Skip Bayless. I never watch. Oh, Skip is a dick. I don't like Skip. It just it, I, I, everything you say, I don't think you believe. Yeah, not like, a word of it. Not a word of it. You're just doing it to, to needle. I've never. Whereas Stephen A. Like his, he baits yeah. all these guys, and then there's pictures of him at D Wade's wedding. He's been yeah. to a number of these guys' weddings. It's just you know. Yeah. Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you. You better not say – you're like, OK. You're really calling out a dude who uh, could easily whoop you, old man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> easily whoop you. I know. That was weird when he was doing Reach that. Reach alone, jab. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything. Just what he calls him out. It's great. Anyway, that has nothing to do with movies. How are we? That's back to uh, back to the show. One last thing. I, I, I love the way he does the weird kind of – Respect to the people he's just finished berating in front of, in the studio because mm-hmm. he'll go like – like I was watching him when he was talking about the Giants and that they were looking at that receivers coach from the Patriots and it was Max Kellerman and a couple of people and a young lady who was moderating the panel and he goes, there's nothing wrong with what you're saying, Max. There's nothing wrong with what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with what you're saying. But you're all wrong. And let me tell you why. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, oh, my God. Shut the fuck up. Well, my favorite is when he goes on a long, like, that guy is a bum. Should not have a job. I mean, no disrespect. Right. <laughs> you're like, what does that mean? That's what, that is a that's meaningless, what doing. meaningless statement. <laughs> he was going no out. No disrespect. The... We're both grown men. Yeah. Really? You insulted him for the first two sentences of that paragraph. No disrespect. Is that your absolution yeah. after saying something? Right. No disrespect. And you're like, that's that's entertaining. It's hip- hypocritical, but it is entertaining. Yeah, man. He did that with the receivers coach. Like I was saying from the Patriots to his becoming the head coach of the Giants, he goes, this guy has no track record being a head coach. He's got no uh, – he's never even been a coordinator. Mm-hmm. No offense. No offense, Jeff. I know you, he's going to get the job. He's going to make the money. But no offense. No but offense. He has no – Credentials to have this job. Precisely. No offense. No, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> We're both grown men. <laughs> like, I don't know what this means. Eight million dollars a year. Yeah, God that, damn it, I got to crack I hear that more nut. of his radio show driving around in the morning. Oh, break yeah, yeah, yeah. Than I do actually see him on TV. I like Shine better. I like Shine better. Adam Shine. I like okay. him. He's good on CBS Sports. I like him. Uh, I usually just listen to news in the morning. Oh, smart. Eh, most new is sports hasn't broken, so what discussions yeah, are we really having? True, fair point. Uh, well, the discussions we're having, segue, is uh, Correct. top 10 uh, British gangster Correct. movies. British gangster movies. In honor of the gentleman coming out from Guy Ritchie, which I missed the screening of this past Sunday because I was at Dan Merle's birthday party. Um, but I wanted to go so bad to see if it was any good, and now I have to wait till the 25th, which sucks. So... Uh, but yeah, we're excited to talk about this. Matt and I initially were kind of kicking this around, and we we kind of were looking at maybe British crime movies, but then we were able to find enough British gangster movies to kind of create our top ten, uh, and we're gonna, of course, break them down like usual. Anything you want to say about it? Um, no, uh, I'm. I'll be interested to hear your list. Yeah, you too. I had one omission because um, initially when we were texting, I was like, I, I'm only at six or seven, but mm. I was in the car, uh, so I needed to look it up, and you're like, oh, okay. There's numerous yeah. within this because uh, in my head I thought of four or five and then I was like, I think I'm stuck at five. And then I stopped and thought a little bit more. Yeah. I, like, I don't know, man. I'm I'm kind of – I'm hitting my ceiling here. 
Uh, but I ran into one. I was like, I don't consider that. That's interesting to me, mm. really. Um, but, you know. Yeah. All arguments can be made, I guess. Yeah. After, yeah. As we just discussed. All arguments can be made. No disrespect. No disrespect. To whoever that is. That if you had that. <laughs> we're, we're all adults in this uh, podcast. Matt Nost, you're wrong. That's not number one. No disrespect. Yeah. Number one is this. You're wrong. Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> John Roga. You are wrong. Uh, anyway, that's enough, Steven. Yeah, I love Steven. Because we, at least I do, I do a piss poor version. So maybe that's why he makes eight million because we spend time talking about him. Mm, it is he good bait. It is anyway. Look, he's honed his shtick. Mm-hmm. He's good at what he does. I gotta find that shtick. Yeah, <laughs> does that uh, work in the entertainment world? I don't think it would work. Nineteen seventeen is the best picture of the year. No offense. Maybe no offense. You could. You get away with it. Yeah, you think so? Look, if it worked in, in sports, why wouldn't it work in theatrics? Quentin Tarantino is the worst director I've ever seen. The worst! I Up until Once did. Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hollywood. It spins it like yeah, that. Right. That is a masterpiece. Yeah. It should be recognized as such. Anyway, all right. <laughs> Enough. Matt, how's the show work? <laughs> 80 <Hoosel. laughs> This is a weird one today. Yeah, it is. This is a weird one It's because we were in traffic for a fucking hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I, I left early when you text and you're like, I'm, this is hitting hard. And I was like, all right, I'll get there early because it's still – it took me the worst case for me. Yeah. And it was still probably 15 less than you. Yep. Uh, not fun. What are you going to do? Well, we made it. We're going to do it because we're the fans. Yeah. We're here for you. We're here for you. You're here for us. We're here for you. I drove an hour in traffic for you. Uh, the way the show works is once we set a topic, we go our individual ways and create personal top ten. Let's show back up here. Uh, I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the two of us. Yeah, boom. Uh, uh, boom. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Jump right in since we already, you know, kibitzed enough. Uh, rock and roller. Oh, okay. That's a uh, punt. Okay. Into the upper area of the bottom five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I figured Fair so enough. Much. Right. Only is, it, it only goes so hard. <laughs> yeah. I have no honest. I have no honorable mentions. All right. I know. I'm at ten. Yeah, I'm too. at ten. Me too. Which is number nine? There's a few all time classics apparently that I've never seen. Oh, okay. I yeah. That's all I, right. I don't have the time, and there's some that I've never heard of, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, number nine for me is Don Hemingway. That's my number nine. Perfect time. Don Hemingway. Uh, Jude Law. Oh, so good in this movie. Playing man. a guy that uh, like just got out of prison after yeah. being in there for a while. He's for, a safe cracker. Yeah, for not uh, narking. Yep. He yeah. stayed in. Yep. Um, yeah. And he gets out and it basically tries to reacclimate the life and get to meet his, his daughter. Yeah. And can reestablish some sort of life. Yeah. And the heart scrabble. I mean, that's got to suck, man. Ten years. Ten oh, years, yeah. Just gone. Yeah. I can't imagine after, you know, well, you could have flipped on whoever it was. Could you do prison? Could you really do? I couldn't do prison. I don't know. Yeah, right? Yeah, no. I couldn't do prison. This scares me. I couldn't do prison. I could do, I could do prison if, like, I committed a crime and for 10 years I got to be in that prison. But, like, for 10 years, but, like, nobody messes with me. Good I luck. Get, I get to read the library. Good luck. Sounds like you did a white collar crime. Yeah, that, that I'd be okay with. I could do a 10 year stint on a white collar crime. That's all right. I get to work out all I want. Sure. I get to go to the library. Who doesn't want that? If the worst case scenario, fed. that thing is way better. Yeah. But the only problem is I have to crap in my own cell. I don't like that. I'm pretty sure you get used to it. Yeah? Yes. All right, fine. You can't, You have to. You got to normalize the situation. That's why people get institutionalized. Yeah, huh? You slowly learn to develop and understand <sighs> this regimented lifestyle that's being forced upon you. I can't do it, man. Yeah. I couldn't do it. That would be too difficult for I me. I need a stall. Uh, Maybe I could buy walls with the cigarettes. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sounds like you think you got a spacious cell here. Once again, white collar. I, I think you'd be <laughs> all right yeah, on yeah. this. I'm going to embezzle some money. <laughs> I'm not going to kill anybody. Look, if you got all that, yeah. then you're like the mob bosses that run it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I cannot. Take a crap in that cell. Uh, anyway, Don Hemingway is fantastic. The, the I think he has a Cockney accent or a new. I'm sure our, our British friends will. He does some this. sort of right, like a criminal accent to me. Yeah, just that's how it's portrayed in movies. Usually, this guy's you know in these types of you know. Yeah, this is one of those. That's, that's Jolly Pete. And you're like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love some of the nicknames that they get in movies. They're the best. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are awesome, <laughs> and others are just like. 
Wow, really? Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess. That's Sheila. Okay. That's Sheila then. Uh, Richard E. Grant's in this thing. I forget who's the Italian guy. If it's Demian Bashir, I think it's Demian Bashir who's in that, who plays the like uh, Spanish or Italian guy who he owes money Amelia to. Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark plays his daughter, right? Uh-huh. It's actually a very, actually kind of a sweet film. With it's got him, a heart. Right? Because yeah. he's trying to reconnect with his daughter. And he, it starts out brutally when he beats up the dude who was like dating his wife or sleeping with his wife or whatever. Um, and you're just like, what am I in for? And yeah. it becomes this absolutely insanely weird gangster film. And this, I mean, like when he's trying to break into that safe and he's having sex with the safe, you're just like, what is happening here? And then you see it, the, it like as the film goes along, the, his main focus eventually is to try to reconnect with his daughter and he takes the hits for it. And it isn't until the whole shit finally all comes down that he realizes what he has to do. And then at that point, he becomes one of the sweetest dudes you could ever meet. So it's just a fascinating film. Uh it is. It is. Mm. And it's part of the string of Jude Laws like Black Sea that to yeah. movie that's really good and nobody went to see it, unfortunately. Right. right. Like you, you're putting out quality work. Yeah. Maybe it'll be like Joaquin and go through this. He's got the steady and then one whatever somebody right. finally goes, you know what would be great for this is Jude Law. Yeah. He's been putting out, churning out like Sam Rockwell for years, churning out great work. And then eventually it's like, yeah, this guy's great. Why don't we put him, you know, yeah. certain people start picking him for better and better stuff. Although Jude Law's had that run. It's like he did. A, it's up and down. It's yeah. up and down. But yeah. he's going to be part of our lives probably for the rest of it. Oh, sure. I mean, he was in Captain Marvel yeah. uh, as the villain basically. And so, yeah, he'll pop up in certain things because he's just – in the Sherlock Holmes, there's a third one coming. Mm-hmm. He's always solid. Uh, and he's always good and he's always electric to watch. No matter what it is you're watching him in, he has this just incredible ability. One mm-hmm. of the biggest – um, things that I ever missed was seeing him do Hamlet. He did Hamlet like interesting in the two thousands, the mid two thousand, like two thousand ten, two thousand West End. Yeah, I think so. And they used like snow on the stage, like they really like dropped snow on the stage from the top. Like, it was insane. Uh, but I don't know if if there's a way to watch that entire production because mm-hmm. look, I love Hamlet, but I only like it done by. Like I got to really love the actor to watch it again. Okay. And I would have loved to have seen his version and Cumberbatch's version of Hamlet. Uh, and I saw Ray Fiennes do it in the 90s in New York and that was incredible. I'm sure. Yeah. So you got to have the right be? actor. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ray Fiennes. Doesn't matter what the guy does. You always go, Man, he's good. It's really impressive. When mm-hmm. you got it, you got it. Even yeah. if it's a really tiny role or something, just like, dude, he's stealing this. You just scene. know. Right. Exactly. You just know. Yeah. You just see it. It's just the, the it's almost like craftsmanship walked yeah. into the room and you're like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> you just hey, who can't spot quality? That's right. quality. There right. you go. That's objective. It that is. is real. It's, when we all to the layperson, they make it look so, you know, effing easy. Yeah. No matter what it is. They could be an accountant and they're just rifling through <laughs> like back in the day, the old paper ones. Right. You know, they didn't even have to look and you know, scanning numbers or documents over here, this hand is autonomous on yeah. its own. You're like Oh my god! Perfect. That's, that's I looked like I could do that, but yeah, no chance in hell. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's Don Hemingway. That Don Hemingway. What's your number eight? Uh, eight is the bank heist. Oh, I never saw that one, so it didn't make my list. But Surprisingly please, surprisingly good. Yes, Jason Statham. Right? Jason yep. Statham and a collection of various characters. Yeah, yeah. Kind of orchestrate this. Wait, the bank? You mean the bank job? Or the bank job? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually wrote down his bank heist. Thank mm. you for that. Yeah. I just remember off memory, and I was like, oh yeah, the bank heist. <laughs> I saw it in the theater and then it was on Netflix like a year ago. Yeah. I, I typed it out yeah. all professionally. I, I like that. With a completely wrong title for one of my ten. <laughs> so that's the quality of professionalism that you're getting from me. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the bank job. Good stuff. I would thoroughly recommend it. Okay. It's a fun little caper heist movie. Okay. I, I don't. It doesn't have the seriousness of Inside Man. Oh, right. Okay. It's not that gritty. Uh-huh. Um, but it's still – it's grittier than you anticipated being with Statham mm-hmm. um, just because he does so much of the action he schlock. So it's yeah. going to be like in essence another Italian job and it's a lot of quick cuts and cool fast action sequences and whatnot. It's more – they're just pulling off an old caper in London and I want to say there's late 60s, early 70s. It's based on a true story. I think so, From yeah. what I understand, yeah. Him and Saffron Burroughs is in this thing as well. OK. Uh, I can remember the – like a lot of the actors' yeah. faces. Couldn't tell you their names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lives in Los Angeles, man. I ran into her one time at the Bagel Broker. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, I just randomly ran into it. I don't even know where that is. Where's the bank? Uh, right, right there on Fairfax and uh, Beverly, right by the oh, CBS sure. studios. Yeah, they have like a little like mini kind of strip. I don't go out for bagels. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So uh, Yeah, it's right there by the subway and shit in this June Bangkok Cafe. But um, I was just in there and she, there she was. And I was like, oh, I didn't say anything. And then like a week later, she was there again. And I was like, this, this, she must live here. And then she has her kids in the van again. And shit. Nice. So I, I, as she was walking out, it was weird because as I, we were walking out at the same time. Mm. I said to her, I just wanted to – like I just said to her, I, I really enjoyed a, a lot of your work and a lot of your movies and I just wanted to say hi. And she was like, oh, it's very kind. I've got my kids but it's very kind of you to take some – and I was like, yeah, OK. Yeah. And I left because I, I, she's unsettling because she's so beautiful in person. You're just like, god damn. Oh, yeah. God damn. Those big eyes. Like, god damn. It's always the case. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow. You are You are striking. Yeah. Like Scarlett Johansson in person, fuck. Like I, I've never gotten it. Like I never thought she was that attractive. Oh, on the screen? Yeah, on the screen. And then I saw her in person at an Iron Man 2 thing at Comic-Con one time. My God, I was like – Of course. I fucking get it. Totally get it. There's a magnetism. Yeah. It, it's, it's palpable. You, yeah, you can sense it. You can. You can. It happens in everyday life too. Yeah, true. When you run into somebody, yeah, I, yeah. There's one example of the two of us and someone walked in and uh, I tell you off. Mm. Um, we both were like – you instantly like commanded the attention of like, hello. I, <laughs> type uh, yes, hey, how are you? Uh, what would you like me to do? Yeah. You yeah. just did the, the – OK. Once again, craftsmanship just walked in the room. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to recognize it. Uh, you yeah. do. Yeah. Every once and again, just like, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Call attention to it, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised we're the same species as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not shocking to me either. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, but I get the sentiment. Dude, have you ever been around somebody that is that pretty? You're like, dear God. Uh, yeah, maybe. A buddy of mine. Maybe. His uh, ex was his model. And we were, mm. all, they were hanging out at the store at the front bar and it was raining and she came r- running across. <laughs> and another friend started doing was like, dude, your girlfriend is – even hotter, like running through the rain. Who does that? <laughs> Type and she did. She ran up and it was like it was out of a movie. And you're like, what, what is this? <laughs> she is so much better looking than me. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. I've seen dudes like that too. And you're like, no, nah, no. Nah. I don't know what your batting average is, but it, it trumps whatever mine is. That's for damn sure. It's like Mike Trout versus a Mendoza line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been in that world. That you works. It yeah. works. <laughs> well, to a sports fan. Uh, that's the next name. The name of my next album. Yeah, right. From Mike Trout to Mendoza. <laughs> or Mendoza Live. Mendoza Live is perfect. Uh, so, Bang honestly, yeah, yeah. see it. Okay. All right. I, I, I think it's worth your time. It's been on one of those lists that I have of like, I got to get around to these this movie. So, yeah, I'll definitely watch it. Uh, all right, my number ten is Legend, which is the Craze yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. No, yeah, no, no, no. okay. I really like this one. I, the original Craze movie that came out in the nineties with the two dudes from Spando Ballet. That was an interesting film. Um, but then this came along, and this was Tom Hardy playing two different characters, um, and I forget the actress's name, Emily something, who was in Sucker Punch, the lead in Sucker Punch, okay. and in the uh, Lemony Snicket's film, she plays the girlfriend of one of the guys, but the other guy is kind of like you know. Uh, likes her as a person, might be in love with her. You're not sure, but it's these two brothers, and it's a real, it's the craze, the yeah, real the craze, craze yeah. yeah, that ex- existed. And Tom Hardy does an incredible job bringing both of these guys distinctly to life in completely different ways, and you're sucked into the story of what's going on here. Is it a great film? No, not by any stretch of the imagination, but his performance performance is mm-hmm. keep you so entranced by what's happening in the movie that you're just watching this all go down and it's brutal when it needs to be brutal and yeah. it's tender when it's tender and it's uh, like unsettlingly uh real when it's uh when it calls for that so i i enjoyed the movie it, it isn't good enough to go up into my top five or anything but like enough to make the list yeah. so yeah. 10 yeah 10 i remember when it came out and then uh the only thing i really know about it at this point is they kept the two star review between the two on the official poster. Mm. So all the people that gave it four stars or whatever else, I think it was the Guardian gave them two stars. Yeah, yeah. But they just put it between the two of them, the negative space between their arms. <laughs> but they cut off Guardian as well. But you could tell it was from Guardian. Yeah. So it implies four stars. That's how they hid oh. a two star from the country. <laughs> made it look like it was four. It's brilliant that when you see smart. it. That is smart. Here, I can pull that up. That is funny as hell. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, it's a. I forget who directed it. Um, because they've done a bunch of things as well. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed what uh, Hardy did here. Yeah, Emily Browning. That's the actress's name. That one. <laughs> it's between their heads, not their arms. I guess. That is absolute. Isn't genius. it brilliant? Yeah. I saw that. That made me want to watch the movie in and of itself right there. But everybody came back and they're like, it's fine. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that sucks because that alone, I that love it. Genius. I love it. It yeah. is genius. It is. It's giving accreditation. It's exactly the two star. Ronnie and Reggie. Yeah. So the Guardian and M- MTV gave it for you. Yeah, so they just imply. All right. So Brian Helgeland directed this thing. This is the last thing he's directed. He did uh, 42. He did Payback. A Knight's right. Tale. Okay. Yeah. He's made some stuff I like. Yeah. He's got uh, two of the films coming up. A Knight's Tale is a movie that should not work and yet somehow does for me. Oh, yeah. Totally. It's anachronistic as hell, but it still works. It does. Yeah. It really does. You're like, what the hell? How is this possible? I agree. I, I, it's Honestly, it's a testament to all the actors because they pull off this absurdity and yet it feels believable. Yeah. You know, with Paul Bettany with the sonnets over the top and Alan right. Tudyk as the almost the lovable imbecile. Yeah. You know, the George. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mark Addy. As the kind oh, the of best friend, yeah, the kind of chubbier guy, uh-huh. and then and then Laura Frazier, who plays the assistant with them all, and then Shannon Sassamon plays the prince. Good pull, yeah, thank you, man. Good pull. Uh, she, <laughs> they were trying to make her happen for a while. They were. Mm. Friend of mine's got a good story about her. <laughs> not, not that kind of good story. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, what's your number? Well, that was, that was your number. Okay, that was my number ten. Nine. Dom Hemingway. Number eight is Gangster. Number one. That's the one I was like, oh, I've never heard of that. The Paul yeah. Bettany. Yeah. It is so fucking good. The description is basically just like a shit ton of violence. It really is. <laughs> and it, in one sequence, you're doing it from the point of view of the guy. Okay. So the entire scene is the guy killing this dude piece by piece from your – you are the point of view of the guy Perfect. killing the guy. It's mind-blowing. The whole scene yeah. is through his eyes. And you're just like, oh, this is so unsettling. And the guy like pleads and fights and does whatever and then starts laughing at him while he's cutting him up into pieces. It's nuts. And uh, Roddy McDowell or – yeah, Roddy McDowell – is that – no. Malcolm McDowell is the is the Paul Bettany in the future. So this is all oh. him remembering how he went up the ranks okay. to become gangster number one because he's self-reflecting. I think either he's a, he knows he's about to get killed or he's about to go to jail or something. And so he's reflecting back on all the shit he went through to try to move up the ranks. Okay. And Paul Bettany is stellar in this movie and brutal. And it's something you rarely see him play. No, that's why it was intriguing. Yeah, it's so good. Dude. It's all the poster. And I was like, OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then a couple stills. And I was like, maybe if I got time to watch this. This, I'll watch it. Like you told me, bank job. I would tell you this. Absolutely, see okay. this. You'll enjoy it. Was it. The, I, you know, I rewatched one for this. Mm, cool. Um, still got to my list. once yeah. I opened it up, but I wanted to make sure on that. Yeah. Uh, but before I went, if I freed up more time to see Gangster Number One. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it looked interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I'm in. I'm trying to see. Uh, let me see who else is in this thing because there's like so many. Good British motherfuckers up in this thing. Oops, sorry, too much cussing there. Sorry about that. Yeah, David oh, Thewlis is in this. He plays David Thewlis plays his boss, who sure. is like moving him up the chain. Sure, but then he eventually turns on him because. Uh, okay, well, don't spoil. Yeah, all for... right, there we go. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, Paul Bettany, Saffron Burroughs also in this one. Saffron Burroughs. Uh, yeah, everyone else. Eddie Marsden is in this. The guy from. Uh, who is it? The guy that does this stuff? Andrew Lincoln from uh, Love Actually and Walking Dead's in this thing. Yeah. There's a number of people who are in uh, from Ray Donovan, the guy who does this from Ray Donovan. Oh, don't, okay. Never okay. watched it. Um, anyway, yeah. Good film. So what's your seven? Uh, seven is Get Carter. Uh, all right. That's my number six. The original, right? Yeah. All right. No, the Stallone one's trash. That's the one it's I saw so unfortunately bad. at first. And it's trash. Mm-hmm. And uh, It could have been so fucking good and it's not good. It's a lot of Stallone. Yeah. It's a lot of him being cool. And uh, yeah. Kind of trying. He went through a weird phase. Yeah, man. There was a number of films that you're just like, what are you doing? And then eventually he was back on track. Um, I love that I just recently heard the story, whether or not it's true. And this could have been passed around for decades, mm. that Schwarzenegger feigned genuine interest in Stop or My Mom Will Shoot to get Stallone to bite on the project, even though Schwarzenegger hated it and thought it was terrible. If that is true, man, 
He, look, he was governor. It makes a lot of sense. Look, Schwarzenegger was known for being the best at those mind games. Watch Pumping Iron. I mean, he told he, he turns Dude, everybody to Ferrigno's jelly. dad yeah. is clowning his own son yep. because Schwarzenegger is like, oh, you can't beat me. And he's like, you know, you, you could try, Lou. You could yeah. try, but it's, you know, look at him. <laughs> You're like, come on, man. It's your dad. It's your dad. Man, just mess with him totally. Yeah, it, it worked. Yeah. Like, Franco dude, Colombo, too. My favorite, it's just the utter pretension. Uh, but it, it, you know he believes it. It's when a guy asks him for posing help yeah. at the Gold's Gym. And he's like, no, see, here's where you're doing it wrong. And it's honestly, it's the slightest of tweaks. And what he knows, uh, it's it's just ridiculous. It's brilliant, man. But at the same time, he was Mr. Universe I don't know how many times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, and it, became it stupid worked. famous. Because he lifted, he worked on his physique. Yep. <laughs> yep. The world is a strange place. Sometimes. It really is, man. Uh, but you got to have that charm. Like you said, you got to walk into a room and you just know, you know. When you're that big, <laughs> then you yeah. need to dominate with personality as well. Fuck, man. Sitting in the room with Stallone that one time when I interviewed oh, him for sure. Rambo, I was just like, oh, man, this is. And he seems like a cool dude. He seems like you'd be like, if I wish I would love to get into your sphere just to be able to hang out with you. I don't have yeah. to I don't have to record anything just to hang out with you, you know? Yeah, Seems well, cool. He does. But I think that uh, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Right. Well, my guess is he hangs out with dudes that are 20 and 30 years older and those are all his friends. You know what I mean? Tw- Guys. Oh, yeah. Well, he's hang like um, him and Grillo hang out and Joe Carnahan is over there sometimes. Pacino hangs out with him. I knew that. They one. were all at a they were all watching some kind of boxing event. And Stallone or whatever did a whole video of it on his uh, on his uh, Instagram or on his Twitter, and you're just like, all those motherfuckers are in the room. Holy crap! Wow. Anyway, you know, it's interesting when you find out who's friends with who. Yeah, it's badass. It is badass. Well, that's why I, I, I really wanted you know to meet uh, Harry Dean Stanton. Oh yeah, because he was friends with everybody. Yeah. Like oh yeah, and then we had Harry. Harry Dean was my best man. Like what? You were best friends with him. That's that's interesting as shit. Because yeah. I also know you're really good friends with this dude over here and this posse of individuals. And everybody loves Harry Dean. Everybody loves Harry Dean. I would love to know Harry Dean because right. there's a reason for that. Yeah, that dude's probably fun and chill. And oh yeah, yeah, of course. You know, seems like. Uh, so that was your number seven. Yeah, Kid Carter. We didn't talk yeah, about it. We don't talk. Oh my god, we went totally tired. Yeah, yeah, the original, the Michael Caine. So it's it's a slow build. It is, but and it, it is dated. It's it a is. very seventies film. But it's also very early 70s. Yes. And uh, it's you know super interesting through that lens. The build is, I think, justifiable enough. Just mm-hmm. know going in, it's going to be an early 70s film. So yeah. just once it gets into gear, it's like, you know, it's it'll get there. Yeah. Uh, it takes a little there. I don't know what you said to over set up characters still. Well, thank God we've all, you know, been educated on that now at earlier and earlier ages mm-hmm. and just updated on the formula so we can skip a lot of this. Yeah, right. It's through no fault of their own, you know. Uh, what for? Eh, when did Taki start? Late twenties, early thirties? Sure, nineteen twenty-seven. Okay, yeah. Look at you. Oh, I'm saying the jazz thing. Did you? Well, yeah. I'm assuming you learned learned that if you didn't know it before for Schmodown and it just kept. No, no, I knew it before. Yeah, yeah, way okay. back, way back when. I used to watch film documentaries all the fucking time growing up in my twenties and thirties. Like okay, everything consumed it. How many uh, are there? There's a lot. Okay. Yeah. From, Did you get your hands on? Yeah. Because IFC used to show them, Sundance used to show them, and then okay. they'd have them on VHS at certain movie shops like Blockbuster or whatever, way in the back, like in the documentary section. You'd have the – like there's a there's one that goes in the early – stage. there's one that um, tackles European film and it's like five DVDs. And it goes from the beginning of film in Europe, like fucking eighteen hundreds, all the way up into the. And you see the progressions of stuff and what they were able to do. <laughs> see all the hazardous makeup they used to, have to wear. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> but the visuals that they were able to get with the limited technology they had, technology they had back then, you're just like amazed at what they were able to do to convey certain things, like witches and uh, demons flying through the air. And this, like, yeah. the German cinema really kind of was into that kind of stuff. So it's fascinating. Yeah, telling. More fairy tale ish. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all the visuals from that, which is one where they shoot the bullet at the moon. It's a cannon. Right, but it's right. basically a space capsule bullet. Yeah, that's the. Um, uh, and it lands like right in the side. Yeah. All of that, honestly, you know it's not, but it's done well enough to where this is still interesting to this day. Oh, yeah. M- Melier, I think, is the, it's a it's French... the director. Yeah. He's the guy in Hugo. Kingsley plays him in Hugo in okay. the film Hugo. It's Melier. It's French. Yeah, it's a rocket that goes into the eye, and then they all jump out. The, the Smashing Pumpkins did a 
their I, video of that. Perfect reference yeah. from <laughs> 25 years ago. Look, that film was from Go 100 years up. ago. Tonight, tonight. I love that song. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. It's my favorite one of theirs. Is it? Yeah. Bullet with Butterfly Wings is good. That's a good song, but I like that one tonight. Tonight's good. Too. I, I, uh, I like understand, like I understand the hookiness of it and yeah. the craftsmanship. It's really good. It's, mm. His voice is always. Oh yeah, yeah. People hated his version of landslide. See, I'm I'm cooler with that. Really? Okay. Because I think that's now I've heard various interpretations, so that right. could be very interesting. Yeah. And you could end up being like a, a Hendrix with along the Watchtower. Oh yeah. And your reorchestration now is the gold standard that everybody does. Mm, good point. Uh, it could be interesting. That's why. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's see what your artistry, artistry can bring to this because you're damn good. Yeah. I mean, you have all the craftsmanship on some level to me is like Jack White, but I like his mm. style speaks to me more. Yeah. But you have created an entire universe for yourself. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Today is the greatest day of ever. All right. Yeah, why are you breath singing? <laughs> yeah. In this first verse. That's not my jam. No. Neither is 1979. I don't like that song. Oh. Either. Catherine, on, 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 on. <laughs> Catherine's favorite band was this. I can't remember, but the the name oh. of the band. But the song was this song was Bleeding Hearts Baby. It is so annoying. Never heard it's it. It's this pop punky, okay, more you know poppy from two thousand four five. Ble- Bleeding Hearts Baby. Yeah, uh, here I'll. Yeah, I will send you a link because if we play it, then we could get you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can't really do. I just want to know who the who. The group is, because that's interesting as hell to me. Oh, I guess Head Automatica. Head Automatica, never yeah. even heard. But the guy is <clears throat> between every line. The it's a bad whatever when he sings. Yeah. So when he gulps for air, it's this seductive, but it sounds so disgusting. And her and a couple of her friends just loved. And it's like <laughs> this dude is so annoying. <laughs> I understand why you enjoy it, right? But to me, this is you know. Yeah. The first dude you saw in leather pants. You're trying way too fucking hard, my friend. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, go ahead and yeah, listen to that at your own leisure. <laughs> okay. It's catchy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I understand. It's annoying as shit. Um, the good thing about Get Carter, too, is uh, you get to see Michael Caine in his prime, man, being a badass. Owning it. Own, yeah, really owning it. Mm-hmm. So when you see Alfred in the Batman movies... You know, and it's it's been brought up recently over the last few years, the last de- couple of uh, decades, that Alfred has this backstory that he, form- he used to be a former, like, British Special Forces guy, and he could kill S-A-S. people. Yes, yes, yes. And so, like, that's part of the training of Bruce. That was some some things have, ha- have been made of that. Mm-hmm. And so um, to see Michael Caine back then, you're like, oh, you remember. If they had played with that in the Nolan films, it would have been believable. Um, could have been, yeah. yeah I yeah. could see that. Yeah. He comes back and he does the thing like Harry Brown is a great one too, where he comes back. He's like a retiree, and this like brutal. Don't you think it it plays into more of the believability than to have the Morgan Freeman character? Because if he's this butler that just happens to also be this on top of a crusader, it gets to this. Wow, this seems all very convenient to the average person. Right, you just made him that, but he's more of a father. Mm Hmm. To you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. there's his dad. And then his dad obviously knows what's going on with Morgan Freeman and whatnot. But Freeman is the one that has all the take capabilities on this right, side. Right, right. So, but that's an interesting tack. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, the Irons version is closer to that. Yes, yeah, right, exactly, right. Exactly. Which I found it as an interesting take. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to have seen more back and forth with him. And that was a believable where maybe Alfred shows up in the Batmobile to pick him up or something at some point. You would have accepted that. Yeah, you would have yeah. accepted that. Because they built happens. it up. You see him working on it. You see him always kind of doing something yeah. in the background. He's yeah. not staying idle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Get Carter, uh, it's good. Yeah. It's very good. You should definitely go see it if you've never seen it. Agreed. Uh, six for me is uh, get ready to say the word punt, snatch. That is just a slight punt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so then my number seven is Rock and Rolla. Oh, the punt from earlier. Yes, the punt from earlier. What a good film. Guy Ritchie getting back to doing after, what was it, Swept Away? And yeah. <laughs> what was the other one? I never saw it. The Madonna, There's no point. The Madonna film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, he, Oof. you married Madonna. Oh, Revolver. That was a terrible one, too. And I never saw it because everybody's like, it's terrible. Oh, it's I'm like, so you know what? I love these two movies. I'm just chilling with these two yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know. You're going ahead. You I'm do sorry. you. You do you. It's fine. We all got to work. Uh, 
Yeah, so Swept Away and, and Revolver I did not see, and this came back out. And the yeah. what I heard early on was, it's Guy Ritchie. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I'm good with that. It's a yeah. good cast. It is. Uh, Gerard Butler, Tandy Newton, Tom Wilkerson. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah. yeah that's So the ridiculous names, I thought of it when we were talking about it. Yeah. You know, he's, he's Handsome Bob. Oh, Handsome Bob. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. I love it. other guys have, like, that's Tugger. And you're like, all right, I don't know what that is, but that sounds rough and tumble. <laughs> is Handsome Bob? Mm, okay. What does this mean? Uh, Idris Elba's in this thing. Idris Elba is in this right, thing. Right, right. Uh, Piven. Jeremy Piven is. And Ludacris. Ludacris. Yeah, yeah. And Gemma Arterton, who plays the mm-hmm. British girl that's with them at the club. Um, and then Toby Kebble, who plays the rocker guy they're trying to go after and find. Johnny, mm-hmm. whatever his name is. Good pull. Who's Wilkerson's... Uh, Son, but not to really test you. What else has Kebble been in? Um, well, he was in that recent Ben Hur remake. Didn't see that was terrible. He's also played Doctor Doom in the latest Fantastic Four remake. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, not that, good, but not his fault. No, but uh, everything he's been in though doesn't. Yeah, take off. Yeah, it doesn't take off. Looks it's like a shame. one of those snake bitten guys. Yeah, I yeah. think he's Koba, the voice of Koba in the um, Planet of the Apes series too. I think. Let's see what else he was. Eh, Black Mirror. He was that his episode was good. Oh yeah, okay. Um, That's one I don't run to and see too often. Black Mirror. I watch every once and again. Yeah. Um, some of them I think are really interesting, and then then one kind of loses me, and I check out for a little while. I know it's not going anywhere, and then you come back. You in. just come back and then watch something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's in that new Shyamalan film, uh, series, Servant. Okay. Um, he was in Hurricane Heist, which I should probably watch someday. Yeah, he is Koba in the Planet of the Apes. I don't even remember that coming out. Oh, it's one of those terrible action movies where they try to rob a bank in the middle of a hurricane. They know a hurricane is coming, so they set up this thing to rob the banks at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's a fine premise. Because they think they won't get caught by the cops. Worst title. Oh, yeah, of course. That's how, that's how you know it's shit. <laughs> yeah. Hurricane Heist. Because uh, look at Crawl. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is a super interesting totally. to a premise that is dumb as rocks. Yeah. But uh, but it works. It works, and the movie is actually surprisingly pretty great. Yeah, yeah. If, if you haven't seen Crawl, it is, it's like 90 minutes, mm-hmm. maybe 85 minutes, hits every beat right, and I genuinely believed the uh, the two actors, yeah. Barry Pepper and the girl that is father-daughter. Mm-hmm. It was pretty fantastic for as ridiculous a premise as this thing is. Yeah, yeah. But Crawl. That's an interesting name. Yeah, Crawl, it gets to the point. Yeah, quickly. Hurricane Heist. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, because what was the one with— uh, I think they know what they're getting. With Morgan Freeman and Christian Slater. Uh, oh, there was the Hard Rain. Hard Rain. Yeah. That's at least interesting, Hard Rain. Sure, Hard Rain was a good name. Otherwise, what is that, Flood Robber? <laughs> I mean— Flag, you don't want to use for heist. You know, we just used it for hurricane. Flood the alliterative thief. flood is there an F? Flood thief. Flood no. thief. Oh, flood. Fl- oh, can you get the alliterative? I can't think of an F. No. for that. Flood felonies. Sure, flood felony. That's <laughs> oh good. my god, it sounds that's like good. A, it sounds like some boss hog should be in. <laughs> <laughs> just that sounds like some low budget. God made a flood felony. Exactly. Hip Dukes is at it again. It's a flood. Uh-huh. Go get a flash. Go, go, go. Um. Anyway, yeah, that was your six. That was yours. That's my seven. Sorry, rock and roll. Yeah, a uh, good story. Uh, Gerard Butler is kind of like having a flirtatious relationship with Tanny Newton, mm-hmm. um, and there's the she is being essentially uh, chased down, uh, not, uh, harassed by this Russian uh, oligarch that she's working for there in London. He's essentially based on Roman Abramovich, who owns Chelsea. Mm. So that right at that time when Roman Abramovich had just purchased tel- Chelsea, so it all worked. And then Wilkins- Wilkinson is like this uh, – Wilkinson is this like a uh, British gangster guy who's trying to make this all happen. And his son is yeah. this uh, coked out guy. But he comes up with stuff on the fly. But he's a, a brutally vicious dude. So all of it comes together mm-hmm. in some fun and interesting ways. So if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. All right. Get Carter was my six. So what's your five, man? Five is the long good Friday. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Not a fan? No, it's not in my top. No, it's not that I'm not a fan. It's not even make my top ten. I don't run back and watch it, so. Okay. I saw it once, and I was like, okay, it's cool. Um, I Okay, I, for the time that it came out, I like that it's a slow build, mm-hmm. and they bring in the IRA angle. Yeah. And 
Uh, it's it's interesting in that there's a guy that's trying to graduate from the world that he's in and still tr- trying to keep both feet in. Right, right. One out, one in. Right. And you really can't ride that line. And how that turns out for someone like him, it's like young Bob Hoskins and Helen yeah. Mirren. And uh, I'd have to look up who else is in this. Yeah. It's but, been a while since I've seen it. So yeah. <laughs> Solid actors mm-hmm. all around. Mm-hmm. Um, but – it really – I understand why Hoskins was kind of announced with this and mm-hmm. people took notice of his name because he has such a commanding presence. It's interesting that my introduction to him was Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Because I wasn't old enough to watch all the stuff he'd really done. So it was like the Roger Rabbit hook run yeah. where he started popping up in fair that I would see more often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got got hooked up with Disney and made some sweet, sweet cash. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Bob. You know? That's how you do it. I hope you bought a house, enjoyed some vacations. Put the kids through college. Right. You know, keep on pretending. You like the British Danny DeVito. Okay. I think Danny's more beloved. He- well, here, obviously. Yeah. But Danny's willing to really go for the joke in I'll a way that right. I can't imagine Bob Hoskins. Like, Danny. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, crawling maybe I'm wrong. out of that couch on uh, Philly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he's been in the whole time just sweating in his underwear. Like, God bless you, man. Yeah, man. You have such a good body image of. <laughs> I wish I had that. <laughs> Just, it's impressive. He had a run, man. See, he's still going. Still going. He is. He is. Plus, people like his limoncello. So good, good on oh, you, All right. True. It's uh, a good point. I don't know if they do or don't, but it seems to be still going. It's kind of like uh, uh, Coppola's winery. I hear he makes good wine. I don't yeah. like it. But it's been around for long enough to where it's legit. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's legit enough that he doesn't have to make movies yeah. anymore. It's not like, you know, Cabo, Wabo, you know, Rita or whatever. I don't know what that does. Right, right. That to me is Sammy sells it at shows. I have no idea. Oh, okay. I, do they? I have no clue. No but clue. I associate it with him and it's like, ah, but I've seen Coppola's in stores. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But People good for you to have. I'll be fu- have you seen the uh, beer delivery trucks with uh, George Clooney's vodka? It's him and another dude on like motorcycles. Or oh, something. no. I haven't no, it's a seen tequila. that. Oh, tequila, right. He's got tequila I know he well. has a tequila. Yeah. yeah. They actually sold it. From what I understand. Really? And they're maintaining like his likeness? A, yes. They sold it to somebody and then they said in the deal, but the guy said in the deal, I want to use your likeness. This is great. And they made all this money oh, yeah. off of it. And you just got to pay me to continue to use my likeness. Yeah. Revenue streams, man. Revenue streams. It's smart. It's smart business. Um, anyway. Yeah. Well, there's so, a story. There's a great story about him and I, I don't know how many it was, but once he got big enough – he cut like million dollar checks for X number of friends that helped him get through all the tough times wow. and everything like that. And he wouldn't take no for an answer. Like as much as they tried to refuse. Right. Which is like, it's not happening. Yeah. It's not happening. I'm going to find a way to get this yeah. money to you. It's another dude. Harry D. Stan, George Clooney. Yeah. Clooney seems to get along with everybody. It's one of it the good seems ones. like it'd be fun as shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to hang with Clooney. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, long said? Good Friday. Good. Go see it. Boom. I think it's – what is it? Like 19 – it's like 1980, 81, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's early 80s. It feels more like a mid-70s movie on some level. Oh, interesting. Me. OK, yeah. That's fair. Especially because it's British. When British stuff yeah. usually is like a few years behind the American stuff but, st- at that time. The pacing is still closer to Get Carter mm. than it is to 1980s fair. Right, right, right. Uh, it's not exactly. It's like right in the middle. That's why I said you know, mid-70s to me seems – is the general progression. Is the ballpark in here? <laughs> a little more advanced. That's all I'm doing. Just ballparking. It's all life is, kids. Listen out there. Just ballparking. Sometimes you're good at it. Sometimes you're bad. That's right. Uh, so that is my five. What do you got? Snatch, which is the pun from earlier. All right. Slight pun from earlier. Slight yeah. Pun from earlier. I thought it would end up higher, but as I kind of like look through the stuff, I just found myself in like this is one I come back to and enjoy over and over again. But it, uh, but I also think it's not. It's a bit comical in terms of how it handles gangsters, and so I wanted to kind of put the top four to have a little more of a. I don't sure, know, realistic grit. approach. Yeah, grit to them. Even if there might be some humor in it, I want it to be more grit. Yeah. This doesn't have as much grit to it. It's it's a fun film to watch, though. And it's it's like enjoyably rewatchable over and over and over okay. again with some great music in this damn thing. Like The soundtrack is still one of my favorite soundtracks ever. Um, the, the, the Oasis it is. song. There's a number and they find great songs for yeah. specific moments. Like when he knocks – uh, Brad Pitt knocks that dude out. Yeah. And the slow build and everything like that. It's beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. The cinematography is fantastic. It's well cast all the way around. You've yep. created a world I buy entirely and this gorgeous shot yep. that is a precursor on some level to the Sherlock Holmes 
type of cuts you do later where you show right, right, right. the advance action and then go into because yeah. they have that same fight in two Game of Shadows. Yep. It's reminiscent of this. Yeah, right at the like end. A, yeah, an earlier version. Yeah. Uh, oh, my girlfriend hates those movies, man. What's that? My girlfriend hates those movies. Really? Oh, God. It's has. such an interesting interpretation. I know. I love it. But I put it on 30 minutes. She was just like, nope, stop it. I don't like I, it. I think Harris all. is very viable. Hell yeah. He's a great Moriarty. Moriarty. Yeah. He's a great Moriarty. When in the, in the restaurant scene, that's hard to make real and believable. Oh. And the fact that everybody just gets up and calm and coolly collected, walks out, and they're anonymous. You don't focus on any of them. Right, right. It's a great shot because they are anonymous. Yep. It has nothing to do with them. I don't need you know, anything else. But yeah, those I think those are really interesting. Mm-hmm. I agree. I actually like the second one more than Me the too. first one. I've started to develop a, a deeper love for the second one than the first one, you know, so. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, this is such a fun film with, you know, the main guy is uh, Jason Statham with, uh, oh, God, I always forget his name. Oh, he's, he's a great from, actor. Yeah, he's from he's Liverpool. Work consistent. He played Al Capone. Yes, he did. Uh, he just he was just in The Irishman as well. Yeah. Um, as so. the, yeah, the guy that gets into it with uh, Hoffa. Yeah. So he doesn't want to give off. up his seat. Um, it's going to piss me off. Damn it. He's worked consistently. There's a there's, Tommy. It's Tommy. It's no, the, his name is Tommy in the movie. What's his name? Crapola. I don't know. Pull it up. What do you got? What do you got? I'm not helping you at all. I'm just staring at my laptop as you <laughs> rifle away on your phone. That's fine. I appreciate I respect that. Well, you just picked it up so quickly and then I realized that I could be looking as well. And instead of actually helping, I just commented on the fact that I'm just not. <laughs> I want to see how long it takes you. So at this point. Stephen Graham. There he is. Damn it. Stephen Graham. Yes. That's going to be a schmodown question one day. I know it is. That's a five Maybe. point. That's a five point. Right? Yeah. Least, that's right? a tougher one. Yeah. Yeah, Vinny Jones in this one, Dennis Freena, Benicio Del Toro, uh, Bricktop, who's Bricktop. one of the best guys. He is a fantastic villain. Right? Because he's in lock stock as like just the assistant to staying in the bar. But in this one, he is full on like scary as fuck. Oh, dude, when he's describing the pigs. Oh. <laughs> Don't you know why? And just like, oh, shit. This entire, you know. I had heard stories of what, but yeah. it had been years. Yeah. It had been – not heard stories. I read stories. It's not like I sat by a campfire <laughs> <laughs> and somebody – Let me tell you about a time where you fed him <laughs> exactly. the pigs. Exactly. Guess you ever seen a pig eat a, a fool, 250-pound man? Buckle up. I'm not exactly sure what accent that was. I, was I, I lost it, it halfway through. <laughs> and that's assuming I, I had a tenuous grasp on it at best. <laughs> um and, you know, I've seen it in Deadwood. And I've seen yeah. it in other iterations. But that was the first one in a while. It was like, oh, yeah, they used to feed bodies right. to pigs. Wang, right? Wong, Wong. Wong. That's right. Uh, no, Wu. 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 Right. Wu feeds them to pigs. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hang die. Swear <laughs> Jin Wu. Hang die. <laughs> San Francisco cocksucker. San Francisco cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Since the best TV show of all time, that movie was not good. Oh, it's okay. I yeah, know. That's how I great. ultimately yeah. feel about it. Just they crammed too much in. Yeah, they did. They did. They put an entire season into a two-hour movie. And right. I it was really just wish. about revenge on what's his face. Yeah, but it's, we got a birth and we got a wedding yeah. and we got an, what an election and then Hearst comes back into town. And you're like, this is a fucking crazy movie. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yeah. If you want to go Irishman three hours and change or something. Yeah, that makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. I don't Split disagree. Split it up into two parts. Cramming all this into two hours. Yeah. When all I want to see is Swearingen or Swearingen. And uh, and you put him in bed the whole time. Yeah. I know he's older, but come on. <laughs> Ian McShane's the best. He's the best. Yeah, this whole thing is just nutty. And, you know, Brad Pitt, of course, does his uh, uh, pikey accent. Um, yeah, I'll be damned if that's not Gypsy. Yeah, well, yeah, which is what the Pikes were. A fucking A Pikes. Um, all of that and um, the way it all plays out, they have great, uh, just great gritty scenes in this movie. And um, But it's all like you never really feel the stakes of it. It's always like just played for laughs most of the time. So, yeah. Um, anyway, all right. What's your number four? <clears throat> four is Layer Cake. Oh, yeah, that's my number four. Good stuff, Daniel Perfect Craig. Time. You really see the bond. Oh, yeah. This is the big, this is him moving towards it. Absolutely. Full on. Mm-hmm. And very well cast. Yes. You know, once again, you got the guy that goes on to be uh, Pompey Magnus in Rome. He's, right. His boss, Jimmy. You got the dude that was on Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, Comini. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Who's the girl? Do you remember the girl? Who is the 
girl. She was an American sniper. Oh, Sienna Miller. Yes, Sienna Miller. Sienna Miller. Oh, and Ben, what's his name? That was in a very British scandal, but he's been in. Oh, Ben Wishaw. Yeah. Oh, young Ben Wishaw. Exactly. He's in it. The dude that uh, usually plays like a nerdyish type of character was one of uh, the Dukes, like oh. his his lieutenant, so to speak. Okay, okay. He was in Pacific Rim, not the Charlie Day scientist, the other scientist. Oh, that guy. Yeah. He, the guy that was in uh, <coughs> Dark Knight Rises or whatever. Playing the stock market guy that Tom, that Tom Hardy like okay. squishes his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Okay, yeah. Uh, who okay. else? Who else? Ooh, this is good. Isn't there a black dude in this? There is a black dude in it, but I can't remember what else he's been. He's one of those of, yes, I recognize you from somewhere because I picture you with a specific hat on. Right. Uh, not in this. But he's it's great, not, though. It's not Idris. No, it's not Idris. Okay. It's definitely not Idris. All right. Uh, let's see who else. Oh, uh, I'm not going to give it to you, so you tell me. You tell me. Oh, the guy shit. that plays he's Jimmy's just... buddy, that okay. actually is the 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 one that's technically actually running things. And Jimmy, he calls him. Um, he didn't call him a lamprey, but he's swimming in in the this boatman? dude's week. The boatman? No. Now the boatman gets gets axed. I don't know who the boatman is. Jimmy Price. Jimmy Price is Poppy Magnus. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Ben Wishaw's in this. Uh, Dexter Fletcher's in this. Okay. Yeah. Another dude from uh, – Dexter Fletcher from the Guy Ritchie verse? Yes. So is Jason Fleming. They're both go. in this from the Guy Ritchie universe. Dexter's a director now. And who is the black gentleman? His name is Monty oh, – sorry, George Harris. He plays Monty. But okay. he's been in a number of things. But where am I thinking of with a fucking ridiculous hat? Oh. Uh, I don't know. What's his name? George he's Harris? He's in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He plays Katanga in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Does he have the hat in that film? I don't know. I'm just pulling up now an image search of the gentleman. This. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Harry Potter. That's what it was. Yeah. He's in the Harry Potter films. That's right. Just keep seeing him. And like, no, nah, he's got like a shade <laughs> or shez or whatever the hell it's called. It's a, uh, yeah. Sally Hawkins. Or a fez. It's a fez. But fez, it's not really yeah. a fez. It doesn't have the tassel. And no, it's, no. It's much larger. Right. But I don't know what the hell this, that, that thing's called. Yeah, yeah. Tom Hardy's in it, too. I forget the Tom Hardy's in it. Oh, yeah. Layer cake. Yeah. Forgot about Sally that. Hawkins too. Yeah, good film, man. Matthew Vaughn directed this one. It is. Uh, it's the drug game, and then um, I don't know. It's like the upper levels of the drug game. Yeah, it's real, but realistically com- comedic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going for wacky zany, but there's a genuine camaraderie between like Daniel Craig and George uh, Harris. Yeah, and Colm. What's Meany? Like? Yeah, okay. Meany, yeah. They have a good uh, – after they figure out one aspect of it and they just have like a kind of discussion between the three of them. It's a nice little scene. And yeah. They take the time. It's not uh, – you know you know it's going to have twists and turns, but the pauses in between are interesting. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Um, so that was both of our four? Yeah, both of our fours. Three is in Bruges. Oh, uh, That's my number two. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love this film. What's that? It's, they're in Belgium, but yeah. they're English gangsters. And they're gangsters. I don't want to hear it. They're gangsters. And they're being chased by a gangster near the end of the movie who's been throughout the whole movie uh, been the reason why they're there. So it's a gangster movie. Oh, 100%. They're yeah. gangsters. Yeah. It's I gangster. was just – because it's in Belgium and whatnot. But I was like, well, but Ray Fiennes is most definitely doing the accent that we associate with criminals yep. in movies in Great Britain. <laughs> well, haven't you killed him? Exactly. Bruges love, like whatever. Like he had some great holiday when he was a kid. And you get there and it's like, it, it seems quaint. Yeah. It seems, you know, it seems nice. <laughs> you know, it's like a fairy tale, whatever. He just gets so offended. Like, how could you not like Bruges? Right, right. And uh, this was my introduction to Bruges. I did not know it before this. Neither did I. I but Bruges in, Bel- in Belgium does not. Uh, Which one came first? This one or the lyric in. The Austin Powers movie. I think the Austin Powers movie came first. I can't remember. Yeah, it did. There's no way it didn't. This to my homies. The first one? Yeah. No, the second one when he's like, this for my homies in Bruges. Uh, Don't even remember that line? Yeah. It's when he's rapping that uh, Hard Knock Life thing with Mini-Me. I think I I squeezed that out of my memory. Like, that is all gibberish to me. I don't don't remember that at all. It's all a bunch of jibber-jabber. All right. Fair enough. And I never saw Goldfinger or whatever it was. Gold member? You ever saw Gold member? No. That's quietly my favorite of the three. Really? Oh, yeah. Maybe for the absurdity, I would insane. appreciate it now. Yeah. It's nuts. At it's the nuts. time, I thought two was two was kind of getting a little too close. For two me. was pushing it. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I think that's the weakest of the three is two. 
That's why I never went back for three. And then everybody's like, oh, no, it's terrible. What are you doing with my character? That's not my Austin Powers. Oh, man, that first Halloween when everybody was Austin Powers, that must have been insufferable. Insufferable. My friend like, Shannon has played him for Universal Studios. Wow. Yeah, for years he played him. People loved him. Oh, yeah. It's still there. Yeah. and, and They still have the British section of Universal Studios. Yeah, they got there, the, but... you know, he's quotable. Yeah. You know, he's easily consumable. I, I, I was part of the, you know, the yeah. generation that helped make it popular. <laughs> When I interviewed Jay Roach uh, on the last episodes, of the, one of the last episodes of the Deep Cut about Bombshell, he I asked him, mm-hmm. "Are you going to do another Austin Powers?" And he was like, "Well, Mike's been kicking it around for a while." Of course, Mike has. What else has Mike got going? Right, but if he ever does it, I'm absolutely there to direct it. So that would be fun because he's directed all of them, I think. So it'd be fun to see him direct another one. Well, if that's the case, then maybe I'll watch Goldmember and then oh yeah, see that one just so I know without a doubt I've seen the you know <laughs> Michael Caine's and he plays his dad. It's so good. And he does the old the cockney Michael Caine. Yo brava. Yeah, but he was he was just getting out of the hibernation of I'll take any job so long as it pays well enough because I don't care. How dare you? Michael Caine did a lot of that. Well, all right. That's not And not... that was most of my childhood. I knew he, he was living on the reputation of a cinematic universe that I hadn't experienced yet. Yeah, but he <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the fact of the matter. What I saw because what was given to me, and I watch new movies, you know. That's a fair. That's a good actually. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Mike Kane was. I oh, seen Mike Kane. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, when, oh, dude, Mike Kane. Oh, he's been, with me. oh. He's been with me a long time. MC and I. MC. Uh huh. It gets shorter and shorter the longer you know him. Mikey Kane. Uh, Mike uh, Kane. <laughs> oh, I don't want to bury any more Batman's. Um, Some men just <laughs> like to watch the world burn. <laughs> That was terrible. That's, that I was like terrible. when you try, though. That's I'm a big fan of you trying every you. time. Thank you. <laughs> nice. You got a helmet over there for me? You what? son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it in your fucking tone. Huh? Huh? I do appreciate when people try the accents. I actually am not a negative towards people doing accents. It's fun. Uh, um, no, I, this is so such a brilliantly uh, subversive film about this relationship between the two guys and what Brendan Gleeson and uh, Colin, Colin yeah. Farrell go through mm-hmm. uh, after – what is it Kieran Hines who plays the priest who gets killed? Um, or the, oh, the little baby. It's a yeah, little it was kid. A kid. Yeah, they were trying to kill Kieran That's why Hines. he was struggling with it. Right, right. Um, yeah. And Farrell plays like this guy who's not that smart and he got into this situation but he's sweet and he like has this like weird kind of fever dream throughout the whole time while he's there. Didn't you I, – I, I took it also too. He thought he was signing on for – the edict of the mob of yeah. we only kill our own. Yeah. So he would have been fine with killing another sure. grown man. Sure. But the fact that this innocent individual, something he never anticipated because perhaps he hadn't thought that far down the road. Right, right. That that was possible. Yeah. yeah. That this is an outcome that could happen to you if you're going to live this lifestyle and carry a gun and, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And that to me is the true heartbreak of it. It's just, yeah. I don't know, he was a young kid and got into something he shouldn't have because it was easy money. Yeah. And... He was good at it, mm-hmm. and he had no better options. It's a shame. Yeah, it is. It's a goddamn shame. Dude, when he <laughs> – the what is it, the fat Americans? When oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the time, he's like, you basically – like, you'll never make it up there. Then they're running after him, and he's just <laughs> staying just enough out of reach. It's a great scene. <laughs> it is. They managed to mine really genuine moments like that of comedy. Yeah. And then it gets back into – because it gets pretty serious. It does. But beautiful, too. That ending. Oh. Is really fantastic. It's like a dream coming to life. Yeah, it's, it's also brutal too. Mm-hmm. What happens to Brendan Gleeson? Oh my god, the sound! You're just like, oh, it's unsettling, man. Uh, but a good film, brilliant film. Um, one of those quietly brilliant films. Um, that was your number three. Yeah, my three. So my three is Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Uh, that is now technically a punt. Wow. All right. What's your number two? Two is Sexy Beast. Are you fucking crazy, man? It's for the rewatchability. Yeah? No, no, no. My number one. Oh, oh, I see, I see. I see That's I see. why it takes the... Okay. I know I'm going to see this one way more. Sexy okay. Beast is unsettling. That's brilliant, man. Kingsley gets under your skin. Oh, so good. And... It's my number one. Just how, you know, you can spot craftsmanship. You can see the devil. Yes! So it doesn't matter what size the package is because it's the axiom from boxing. It doesn't matter the size of the dog in the fight. It matters the size of the fight in the dog. Right. And when you see the devil walk in and be like, well, there's no amount of fight. Yeah. That dude is just pure evil. And you can spot it. Yeah. 
I've been around just like you have. Some dudes are just like, I don't like the look in your eye. Oh. There's something about you that is unsettling. The fuck? Too, too. He doesn't know how to negotiate his emotions at all. And so it he leads doesn't know to, how to deal destruction. With people. Yeah, right. He has no concept mm. of how to deal with people. They bend to his well be- will because that's the only way he understands and can process the universe. And he's doing a terrible job at that. Well, it's also ironic, too, because when they bend to his will, he hates them even more. Yes. Because the fact that they would be willing to be pushed around by him, you know. He hates everything. Yeah, he hates everything. He's never pleased. No, no. And all these dudes kind of kowtowing, doing especially – uh well, Ray Winston. Damn you! I was like Ray, 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 Ray. Ray. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to lose my memory. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I that's, apologize. That's I'll getting, let you do it. I'll let you do it. Apologize. It's fine. Just getting supplanted by basketball stats. <laughs> yeah, useless. You useless have them all over the place, basketball man. Basketball stats. That's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got those for days now. <laughs> this. Uh, you know what? One of the positives about being let go, man, is I can spend more time reading these articles about it. It's, yeah, I'm excited. I'm like the coverage of sport in general. Yeah, is so ex- exploding. You can drop right into whatever world you want to get into. Yeah. and be fully immersed and confined. Even if it's an opinion you don't agree with, it's well thought out. Yeah, and it makes you reevaluate your understanding. Like I don't fully buy what you're saying, but that's interesting. And it's helping change yeah. how I perceive. I miss when the ringer used to do every couple of days, they do like a, a breakdown of all the games that have happened over the last uh, couple of days. And they would break it every couple of days. And you'd read, oh, what did they do this time? What did they, they had, those were great articles to read. They kept you in, dialed into the NBA. Okay. They don't do that as much now. They really? profile Their NBA teams. Coverage, usually, I, don't, I don't go to the ringer specifically. Oh, okay. Like if it gets diverted from somewhere else, like, right. oh, check out this ring art. It's nothing against them. I just right. I digest from other places. Well, they'll break down other teams. They'll break down yeah. situations and what teams apply to the situations. Like I was reading the the, the trade one recently. Mm-hmm. They were talking about what teams should be trading, should not be trading, and all this kind of jazz did is you read happening. The Bleacher Report one? I did not. No, I haven't read that one. Okay, I'll I, take a look at that one. That's one. one uh, the Athletics got one, but you got to pay to get behind. I have the, the Athletic. One. Okay, yeah. I pay for that one. Uh, yeah, Athletic's got one. That's great cover. Everybody, everybody's got one. Athletic's the best, dude. But they got some fantastic cover. I mean, that's why when they went half off during Christmas for I think thirty bucks or something like that, I was doomed. I was like, thirty bucks, please. I'm gonna get more than thirty bucks of reading out of this, without a doubt. Yeah, for the year, it was perfect. I did that with a podcast that I love. I'm just oh. Like, oh, your old back catalog is X. Done. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will listen to all of it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, it's a sexy beat. Ian McShane, my boy. Yes, my boy. Yeah, like it's Daddy. a stellar cast, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. They have all these great, uh, you know, character actors from England popping yeah. in. That it's interesting to see the assortment. It's kind of uh, you know to watch all these guys work within a room. Yeah, all these actors. That's why when ensemble's done well, it's it's tough to beat as mm-hmm. as my favorite thing in cinema. Because when a scene comes alive and it's electric and everybody's on their marks yeah. and really believing in their characters and whatnot, and they bring just through their interactions I something. It's like watching 12 Angry Men. Mm. You're all – this is a room. So you need to really captivate me. And plus now with, what, six decades yeah. between me and yeah. your release and it's still as effective. Yeah. And you can do that on 60 Beast. It's the tension. It's the implied violence and implied threat at all times. Right. Uh, yeah. Kingsley is just on side. I won't watch it as many times. That's, That's why it's not number one. Oh, wow. I, I have a rewatchability on this. Like, it's off the charts for me. I can watch it over and over and over. I think I can watch Pockets. I like him. I like him so much. Uh, Ray Winstone and the chemistry with him. And But it's so heartbreaking because you just yeah. know. Yeah. Where it's going to go. Yeah. But also that weird kind of gay subplot with him and – it's a whole weird world. Edward Fox. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. They world. do that in gangster Layer Cake. Yeah, the British gangster world's weird. Man. The uh, the former head uh, crazy something or other. Yeah. He was gay. And the quote in it was like, you know, uh, shagging birds is for poofs, I think is the line. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's the easy one, shagging birds. Yeah. You try shagging men. I had a buddy, <laughs> had a, a, a bit akin to that years ago. It just it crushed. Oh, it's one really? of those, you see it and you're like, the ball's on you to pull this off, and it's great. I've never <laughs> seen it not work in every room, but it takes a real chutzpah to start this. Yeah. He had like two or three of those, and you're like, when that crushes, man, it crushes unlike anything else. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I just saw the Leslie Jones one that dropped yesterday. How was it? You I like actually it? liked it a lot. It's good. an hour and six minutes. Um, she does the Kinnison thing of a bit, like the yelling and stuff, but it works, and okay. it's funny. 
And I've never seen comedy from a woman talking about getting older in her 50s. And so, like, she talks about, like, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Like, mm-hmm. the differences. That's the whole set. And then there's stories Smart. interspersed. And I was just, like, shocked by it. I'd never seen anything like that. And I thought it was brilliantly funny. And the new Michelle Wolf one was good, too. Nice. I like that one. That was really good. No politics at all to the last joke. Everything else is good she for doesn't her. need to. She doesn't need to. Well, but most people are tuning in to see when she gets to it. And right. Doing the last one, it acknowledges, I know oh, what you're here for. that's smart, yeah. And I'm closing on that. I didn't give it to you. I delivered something else. Smart. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, even uh, her, you know, correspondence dinner. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the room was not enjoying. It's not the right room, but, but it was it, brilliant. It, to watch the fearlessness. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Did you Have you seen the Bur- Burbiglia one yet? Are you like not no. a fan of his? No, I like uh, okay. Burbiglia. He's, okay. He's fun. Seemed like an interesting one. I don't know. By all accounts, he's a really nice guy. And, yeah, yeah. You know, he's been working steadily for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. But okay. he's had numerous one-man shows that have done insanely well for himself wow. and written books. And wow. he's got an interesting story. He has like some weird sleep disorder. Okay. Where it's like a sleepwalking thing. But he th- threw himself out uh, sleepwalking uh, out of a window at a, like a – a hotel up in the Pacific Northwest on the second or third floor, second Holy floor, I think. fuck. So now he has like a special blanket that he has to sleep in, but it was part of it. He turned it into a show. Holy shit. Yeah. It's super interesting. I've never really gotten into that, but his story is amazing. And all I've ever heard from anybody that interacts with him, it's a great guy. Wow. So it's like, good for you, man. Keep working. Because I, I think initially when he came out, he may have had, uh, you know, he knew people. Yeah, 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 And there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Sometimes you know somebody. Yep. And if you're good enough, it doesn't matter. You would have – it would have taken you longer to get here, but right. the door would have opened. Right. Uh, so I yeah. think that was the – but I didn't know him and I didn't grow up. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. He's 10 years before yeah. when I started. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So where were we? Snatch. The yeah. Was, Lockstock. Oh, no. Sexy, sexy Beast. beast yeah, Lockstock so. is my number one. All right. Um, just the first thing I think of when I think of now when I think of British gangster movies. Totally. Guy Richie really – Really brought it back uh, around to the degree that made me go back and search for the previous generations. Yeah. I don't think I would have seen those had there not been this successful version in my lifetime. At least all the ones that I have seen. Right, right, right. And still miss some. Um, But to turn it into a global hit, that and then snatch thereafter. Mm -hmm. But this interesting ensemble cast of some guys that went off and have been consistently working every day since. Uh, Although the lead in that... I can't think of yeah. what else has he been in. He kind of disappeared for a while. Now he just pops up and does random uh, guest star stuff on British TV. Okay. Every time he pops up, I'm like, you're the one that didn't make it. You're so good. Or you did or didn't the, make it to that level. Or you know? did the heart knit for some reason checked out yeah, yeah, for whatever maybe. decision and then – Maybe. Well, you're not getting those shots. So the heart knit got to go a lot higher. He did. He did. Uh, yeah, because Fletcher and Jason Fleming and – What's his face? Uh, uh, Jason Statham all like you know yeah, have a certain modicum of success. Statham's introduction to the world, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he has been he isn't even the lead. No, yeah, but damned if he isn't like great in every scene. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's the most badass of the four, and it and it shows. Oh yeah, yeah. Through the whole time, it really does. Yeah, um, it's where I learned the word copious. <laughs> we grow copious amounts. It's where I, it's where I got it. I was like, Cope, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> File that away. <laughs> but more often than not, when I use it, I think of that yeah. in my head. Copious amounts of weed. Yeah. Like, you don't see the problem with this? We have a cage <laughs> at the door so people can't just get in with guns and shit. Right. You don't see a problem with this. The girl that's like sleeping on the bed and all of a sudden flips yeah. out with the machine gun. You're like, holy fuck, what the hell is this? Yeah, the narcoleptic practically. Yeah. <laughs> All those guys. It's great characters throughout. You know, um, you've got the 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 I don't know the criminals that live next to the do next to the four of them. They're planning their heist. Uh, you've got True, and they hear it through the wall. Yeah. type of thing. Yeah, so they're trying to. You got Vinnie Jones in this thing. This first like kind of really explosion of Vinnie Jones. You've got the black dude who's like uh, in charge of the of the area there with the Jerry Curl. I forget his name. Oh yeah, the yeah. short little. Uh, yeah, he's crazy. Eddie Griffin looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not Eddie Griffin. Right. Yeah, because there's that the, that bar, and doesn't he light the dude on fire? Yeah, he does. Take light the dude on fire. Yeah. And I love how that shot too, because you don't realize it initially on, and then they flip to his perspective later. Yeah. And you see that he was in the bar at the same time as those guys, and then the the craziness that happened behind you. He was the author of that. Right. 
Yeah, it's just excellent pacing. They flash back and forth. The two guys that are going to steal the two shotguns. Yeah, and whatnot. What are guns that fire shots? Oh, you the brains of the outfit in. That guy, the governor, who's a real guy. That guy was really part of the syndicate and British gangster himself. How could you not be? I know. He's meaty hands, man. Well, you look you look like a human bulldog. <laughs> so what else does a human bulldog do except get in to be an enforcer for it's a true. crime syndicate? It's true. I don't know what else you use a full-blooded pit, pit, pit – not pit bull, but uh, – bulldog, bulldog for, yeah. He's so good in it too, man. He is. I was surprised I didn't see more of him. Oh, you're the brains of the outfit, yeah. You tell me he couldn't pop in every once again some Ocean's Eleven type of. Oh yeah, well he died. Oh, did he? He died right after you making the movie. Okay, I was gonna yeah, say, yeah. I was like, why didn't he ever run? Oh yeah, he should have. Okay, he's been in other. He was in th- other things before Lockstock. He's like Vinny Jones. He was transitioning yeah. into his, his acting, but he was so good in this movie, man. And yeah, but he was just never introduced to us. Yeah, as much as British audiences or right. Whoever saw him over there. And then Harry was good, too, the guy who plays the villain. And yeah. Sting's in this motherfucker. Sting's so. is, yeah, yeah. It's his dad. Yeah. He's got that bar. <laughs> Leverages that bar. Shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. They're, they're peeking over your shoulder. Yep. They're, they're uh, Houston Astroing you. <laughs> dude, that— Don't get me started on that. Dude, just to close on, is utterly ridiculous. I don't care about baseball at all anymore. I stopped caring. <sighs> sure. And— it is utterly – how you don't vacate that you got to vacate the series. How you don't is you, beyond me. You have to vacate every single I, playoff win during that whole run. I, I just think you, it's one of those of – you don't even give the Dodgers – you can give them the trophy, but it's one of the – Right. There was no winner that year no. because you guys cheated. Make it even more ignominious yes. for the Astros. You get to carry the stain as being the only one. There was never a winner one season because you guys cheated. Taking the first-rounders – Okay. Losing a front office and a manager. Okay. But when it was the players that did it? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Even the Red Sox fired their manager, Cora. Cause they had shit. to. Yeah, right. They had to. Baseball is now. This is their PR. Like, we're stomping out fires. Mm-hmm. Who can they get away with firing or asking to yeah. step down in the better interest of the team? Okay. Wink, wink. Uh, but no players are facing. It's just from afar. It's mind-blowing. It is. And they're like, oh, we wouldn't be able to tell which pitcher did what, which uh, pitch." And I'm like, did. I think they're afraid that if they started doing that, the players' union, it would be locked up in legal battles they forever. Easy. Give all the footage from the entire playoffs to all the conspiracy nerds in the world who have gone through like all oh, the Apollo released point. whatnot, has spent way more time on something that uh, once you see it, you're like, mm, okay, I don't believe you. Yeah. And you're like, ah! You know, <laughs> it's been years. You gotta believe me, please believe me. No, no, it's not happening. Uh, but yeah. there's so many people that would easily get bogged down into this, down to the, mm-hmm. the tiniest of minutia, and be like, right here, you can isolate the audio. Yeah, here's a trash can. Here's a trash can. Here's a tra- oh, look at that. Their batting average goes up. F- you know, fifty percentage points. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now they're batting near 300 as a team all of a sudden. Every time you hear a trash can, that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. You hit two times the home runs at home Bunt. than you did on the road. Yeah, Your yeah, slugging yeah. percentage was up a crazy <sighs> percentage at home. I realize the sample size is tiny, but yeah. it uh, – There's a lot to explore here. We're all, we all know there was fire, so now we're just looking for how much smoke. Yeah. As opposed to the inverse. You got to vacate the series, man. I'm mad they didn't vacate the series. I know. Anyway, that's a, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's a segue. Lock, stock, and two smoke barrels. Guys, there don't you see go. that. Yeah. My third recommendation. That's our, <laughs> that's our separate top ten lists. Now we're going to uh, put the – oh, I don't know. Are they still doing the graphics for us? I I asked Cody today and uh, I sent him uh, yeah. you know, two lists yeah. if you'd send him uh, – and he was like, I'll definitely do it for this week. The, the one that comes out for last week's show, Best right, in 2019. Right. Okay. And I was like, just let me know. Do we need to keep doing this? Yeah. Uh, we also forgot to break once again. Oh, God damn it. I know, two weeks in a row. Oh, well. Hopefully there's uh, enough of a pause. Any hoozle. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know. So I, I guess do one more rundown and we'll sure. play by year going forward. My Sounds good. 10 is Rock and Roller. Nine is Don Hemingway. Eight is The Bank Heist. Seven, Get Carter. Six, Snatch. Five, The Long Good Friday. Four, Layer Cake. Three, In Bruges. Two, Sexy Beast. Number one, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Boom. Uh, my t- number 10 is Legend. Number nine is Dom Emingway. Number eight is Gangster. Number one. Number seven, Rock and Roller. Number six, Get Carter. Number five, Snatch. Number four, Layer Cake. Number three, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Number two, In Bruges. And number one, Sexy Beast. Uh, all right, let's put this thing together, man. 
Um, you writing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got it. So Sexy Beast is one. Okay. Because it's one, two. Okay. Then it's one, three on Lockstock. Okay. So I would say that's probably next. Uh huh. What's in Bruised? That would be our next, and then Layer Cake. Okay. That was good in that. Well, we have a lot, you know, we have mm-hmm. three of the same in the top four, so it's just a matter of figuring out where all these motherfuckers go. <laughs> four Layer Cake. Five, five, my five you don't have. What's your five? Snatch. Okay, Snatch it is. Okay. And then, what, Get Carter, Dom Hemingway? Yeah, I got Get Carter at six. Or Don Hemingway, and then uh, Rock and Roller, right? Yeah. Get Carter, I have it seven. Okay, I have it at six. All right. Would you give me Long Good Friday there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, what do you have higher, uh, Hemingway or Rock and Roller? Rock and Roller is at seven for me. And Hemingway's nine? Yeah. All right, so Rock and Roller. Dom Hemingway. And then what's your last highest? Uh, number eight, Gangster number one. Uh, mine is The Bank Job. Okay. Number what, seven? That's my number eight as well, sir. Oh, okay. So it's the same. That's fine. I haven't seen yours. You haven't seen mine. That's all right. Put Bank Job in there. Uh, all right. There we go. All Easy right. peasy. All right. The top ten gang- The top ten British gangster movies. Yeah. At number 10. The Bank Job. At number 9. Don Hemingway. At number 8. Rock and Roller. At number 7. The Long Good Friday. At number 6. Get Carter. At number 5. Snatch. At number 4. Layer Cake. At number 3. In Bruges. At number 2. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And our number one British gangster movie is... Sexy Beast. Oh, yeah. He's boiling. Uh, Holidays. Uh, uh, rotten Peaches. I never heard that song. Uh, all what's that song? Peaches. Rotten Peaches. No, is that what it's called? Oh well, song by the Peaches or oh, the Stranglers. It's something called the Peaches. Anyway, I never heard it till I saw Sexy Beast, and oh. I love that song. Okay. Anyway, there it is. Our top ten British gangster movies. Correct. So one can. that I saw on a list, and I was like, I don't count that. Eastern Promises. Oh yeah, no. It takes place in London, yeah. but they're Russian mob. Yeah, the Russian mob. So. Yeah. I, that to me disqualifies. Just I agree. That's why in Bruges, and like, yeah, they can be wherever they want to, but they're British gangsters. Right. Right. This just happens to be happening in London. That's not the same thing. Yeah, agreed. Uh, we'll see how gentlemen is. Uh, we'll see how that is. I'm going to go see it at least a couple of weeks, or maybe there's a screening next week. Early we'll returns on Rotten Tomatoes seem to be pretty good. Oh, good. That's a positive. Yeah, it's sitting at a 75. Oh, that is great. I know. Because holy crap, when I saw the poster originally, I was like, Matthew McConaughey needs to fire his agent. <laughs> Why? I'm not kidding. He's well, won Oscars and he's he's doing fine. He has, but since that run, that yeah. two three year run, yeah. it's been weird. Doesn't get the buzz, the beach bum. Yeah, I don't uh, think he cares anymore now. I think he's just happy doing projects that excite him. He's made his money. He's made his name. He's set up that Lincoln. He's got that Lincoln money. Yeah, yeah, but he still wants the acclaim. Yeah, I guess he's maybe. an actor. Yeah. You think he'll end up in a superhero film? No. I don't see him doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so I would say, Sing I Didn't See. Kubo and the Two Strings was the last one that I really loved of his. Oh, uh, yeah, because he did a voiceover. Yeah, because yeah. you got uh, Gold, The Dark Tower. Gold was good. White Boy Rick. I thought Gold was fine. Yeah. White Boy Rick. I liked his choices. Yeah. I just think the overall, him and uh, the, the Pedro, not Pedro, but the, the guy that was on... Uh, the killing of Giovanni, the assassination of Giovanni Versace. Oh, okay. He Diego was the Luna? other dude. Diego Luna or no, Gael no, no. Garcia Bernal? Could be. Okay. I don't think so, though. Okay. I don't know. Uh, oh, Edgar it, Ramirez. There you go. Yes. Uh, He's good. I like Edgar Ramirez. I like, yeah, the two of minute. Yep. Serenity, the beach bum, which I heard actually the beach bum is better than you think. Okay. But it's sitting at 56%. So maybe not as good. As is gold at 43%. Yeah, well, well, that's tomatoes. surprising to me. But he's just had a few of these were like, uh, bup, 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 like Gold had right. Oscar aspirations, I think, originally. Yes. And it just didn't deliver on. Dark Tower was supposed to be a big, huge box office payday. Yep. Didn't deliver. Nope. White Boy Rick, another kind of Oscar baity could be. White Boy Rick. Uh, so anyway, I hope it, uh, you know, although McConaughey, McConaughey is going to be in our life for a long, long time. Yes. Um. Yeah, so, so the relist won't be out on this Sunday. We're just with the new year coming back. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, you know, returns from people were a little bit slower, so we couldn't get it all exactly in time by the time we had to record. So it just delayed by one week. Yeah, it'll start. You'll still get it at the beginning of next month, and uh, 
Yeah, we got shout outs for you next week. That's right. Um, Houston, once again, be on the lookout. If you purchase tickets, once they take it off the calendar, they'll send you an email. And if you have any problems, please, once again, reach out over email at uh, top 10 uh, podcast, all spelled out at Gmail. Which one is it? I think uh, that's the only one that I waver on. I was like, which one is it again? It's the top 10 podcast or top 10 show all spelled out. Okay. Um, and now it won't let me scroll down. Top 10 podcast at Gmail, all mm-hmm. spelled out. Mm-hmm. And hit us up over there uh, if you have any troubles. And uh, May 2nd, London, kingsplace.co.uk. Yeah. Come out. Let's make some magic. Uh, maybe we're looking to get in a photographer. There's potential sex swings uh, hey, oh. on the table. There's yes. all kinds of stuff. You already heard all this. It's all in play. It's all in play. Let's There's a lot of choices. Let's make it happen. Uh, we have gotten weirdly se- like sexual in some regard on our uh, choices so far. Sure. Well, there was the Speedos. Oh, there was a Speedos. Yeah, but you wanted a robe there after, and I'm like, I in did. for a penny, in for a pound. Oh, that's fair. If we're doing this, we're doing this. I want a Union Jack on my ass. Um, anyway, there I, we go. I want it right over the front. That way the sun never sets <laughs> <laughs> on the English Empire. You know what I mean? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. I like it. I like it. We're getting uh, uh, Harry and Megan, and yeah. you guys are getting us. Maybe we should get Megan to come and be on the show. Please. She wants out of that country. They're, they're leaving. <laughs> they're already left. I, she called into the meeting from Canada. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. Know that. She was like, I'm not leaving. I'm good. You guys have your meeting. I'm going to be over here to take care of my baby. I thought it was brilliant. I love that she's big league. In, she's big league in the monarchy. That's how much power the monarchy has. All right. She's big league in the monarchy, man. I look at her, respect that. My girlfriend hates it, but I love what Megan's doing. She's I like, don't care in the slightest. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Didn't know that she called in, all that. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah, Breaking why? the British family apart, the monarchy apart. They're really not. I, I don't know. Because he's never going to be king. No. So what does it matter? Exactly. Right, right. See, the reason that she is there, as we have watched and seen in other movies and whatnot, is because her uncle abdicated the throne. Yeah. Because he wanted to marry a two-time divorcee who is currently married. Yeah. And wanted to live a playboy lifestyle. And he lamented that decision later on, Mm -hmm. but still enjoyed his life. He just wanted his cake and eat it, too. And people were like, no, you're you're afraid of the looming war and don't want to have to do what needs to be done. Right. You're you're shirking the duty. You don't get the praise thereafter. Yeah, to take the punishment. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. And that's our top 10 list for this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, like you said, like Matt was saying, May 2nd, King's Place. Go get those tickets now. Get all your friends and family in there. We're going to have a good time. Those of you who came before, tell other people. Go in the Facebook group. Tell them your favorite experiences of being there in the live event and see if they in, uh, uh, to, to kind of excite them to come. Why don't we bring a little piece of Americana with us and we'll do like a fish fry while the show's going on. And then we feed everybody at the end, you know? <laughs> Bring some of that down south that we're accustomed to, the hospitality, oh. and bring that to the people. You want us to do a fish fry? We're not going to be allowed ah, to do a fish fry. We won't fry. get the permits, but I like the I promise. Like, you know, I like hey, the idea. Or not promise, but uh, sell on the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, the idea. We'll bring some ribs. <laughs> we'll do something. We'll FedEx in some great baby backs. Where's the New York people? I thought New York was – has it been building at all, the New York page? I don't see the New York page building up. If you are a New York person, uh, Edward Harrell, I think, started a top ten Facebook page for New York. Go and sign up. Go get on there and because we want to come to New York as well. We'd be, uh, we'd be down to a show in, in New York. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. And Boston. Get your cities in place, son. Please, please. We want to go – Wherever uh, people want to see. Yeah, are you checking right now? Uh, no, I'm okay. pulling up because we should still have ours up. Yeah. yeah, we have ours up. Cool. Yeah, go there. Uh, yeah, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash top 10 with the number 10 NYC. Top 10 go. NYC. There you go. So, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash top 10 NYC. All right. And if we you want to donate to the, if you want to support the show, you go to www.patreon.com uh, slash the top 10 number 10 there. Um, for me personally, you can follow me at the Roca says. <laughs> I also have, as I said, my YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash John Roca says. Go and sign up there. I got a lot of content coming over the next couple of weeks. So get ready. Um, all of that, Matt. Please follow him. Do all that jazz. I'm at Matt Nos. Follow the show at Top Ten Show. Leave us a rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to it. We thoroughly appreciate it. And uh, thank you to everybody that supports us and all the different cities. Houston, we're working on another venue. Yeah, uh, we will be in touch very, very soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is it this week for the Top Ten Show. Mm-hmm.